Hello, this is Dr. Mims here. We're going to go through the part two of the Tupelo sewing machine case. We had just finished uh, our first question in the output section. We're going to move on to question two, which I believe we may have just finished doing the markup chain in question two. I just want to reveal it again here so that if you wanted to make sure to um, type along and see how did we how did we do this, we take the uh, retail selling price, divide that by 1 plus the percent retail markup on cost using Formula 4 so that we could determine what the retailer cost was. And then we then multiplied that times 1 minus the percent markup on sales price by the wholesaler so that we could calculate the wholesaler's cost, which is also the uh, manufacturer's selling price. That's all done in one simple equation. Okay, moving on to uh, question three. Question three asks us, what are the weighted average material costs for alpha, beta, delta? And let's look at these, okay? Uh, to determine the weighted average material cost for alpha, we simply need to calculate the material costs for alpha, which is in B30, and multiply it times its percentage of units sold. So let's look at that. The material cost for alpha times the percentage volume that alpha represents. So I'm going to see if I can't double-click this and show you. See, this equation has 35% times... And then I'm going to have to go down and show you what B30 is. B30. If I take a moment and hide all of these columns right here, these rows, you might be able to see these equations very quickly and very easily. Okay. There we go. All right. So now I can double-click and you can see what I've done here. So that's the weighted average material cost for alpha, weighted average material cost for beta, weighted average material cost for delta, which means all I have to do now is simply sum this group to get all the weighted average material costs at Tupelo. I'm going to do the same thing with their labor costs. I'm going to take in the labor cost for alpha. I'm going to weight them by its percentage of sales. Labor cost for beta. I'm going to weight them by multiplying times their percentage of sales. Same thing with delta, multiplying its labor costs per unit times its percentage of sales, which gives me the weighted average labor cost. I'm going to total up all of these weighted average labor costs for each sewing machine model, and I get $87. I'm going to then bring down the packaging and shipping expense per unit, which is simply $32. Per unit, then we need to calculate the sales price, um, sales commission. Using the unit, unit selling price for Tupelo, we multiply it times 0.4%, and you can see here I've used 4.4% in B37, and we know now that B62 has our sales price, right? Okay, very good. Now we've got that per unit commission. All I have to do now to get the total unit variable cost is I've got to add up all the unit variable costs for materials, labor, shipping, and commission. So our total unit variable cost is $231.61. I can now calculate the Tupelo's dollar C by simply taking and subtracting from the unit selling price the amount of unit variable cost, which gets me dollar C, and then multiply that dollar C by the unit selling price. Remember our P&L statements, revenues, cost of goods sold margin. Okay, we've simply multi we've simply divided margin, but this is per unit. Dollar C is per unit divided by the unit selling price, which is margin divided by revenues, gets us 53, almost 54 percent margin percent cost, percent cap uh, contribution per unit, percent contribution per unit. Now we're going to make a, um, a list of our fixed costs for question four. If you were to look at 
uh, question four. Let me see if I, I hid those fixed costs here. I'm going to unhide those so that we can look at those. Okay. I'm going to unhide those. Very good. All right, so we, we left, listed all of our fixed costs in our first video. This is a list of them, but we have a little bit of calculation to do. First, we're going to bring down our production setup. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the amount of annual salary per salesperson and we're going to multi multiply it times the number of salespeople. Remember we had a number of salespeople in our other? That's what that is right there. Okay. Same thing with the salesperson's travel expenses. We need to multiply it times the number of salespeople. We simply need to bring down a reference for $160,000. We're just bringing it down. Okay. Then we need to make another little calculation for fixed costs on those brochures. Remember in our other information, we had 5,000 brochures times $10 each. And then we need to also bring in the uh, fixed costs for the vice president of marketing, which gives us the ability to total these up for a total fixed cost of $818,000. Now that we have the total fixed cost, we can run through our different profit scenarios. The first one is, what's just the normal break-even on this? Great. We're going to take our dollar. See, I'm going to move this line up so we could look at this, hopefully, as one, one unit. Okay. We're going to take dollar C for our first scenario using the roundup function so that we don't have a portion of a sewing machine. We need whole units. And we're going to type in roundup, parentheses open. Our equation is total fixed cost divided by dollar C, comma, zero to indicate the number of decimals we want, which is zero decimals, and it'll round up to 3,016 units. To then calculate what that break-even number in units is as far as sales revenue. We simply multiply the number of units times the unit selling price. Remember, unit selling price is in B62. Okay, we have three different scenarios that the vice president of marketing wanted us to go through. The first one was using, I'm going to bring this line back down again so that we can see some of this information. The first one was using $500,000 as a profit goal, okay? $500,000 as a profit goal. All right, so let's go to that scenario. What is our required level of sales in units if we have $500,000 built into it? Well, the first thing we have to do is add that $500,000, B50, to $818,000, our total fixed cost, and divide it by our um, dollar C. We need to round that up because, again, we're talking about units, and we get 4,860. So let me see if I can double-click and get rid of this line. I want to show you where this scenario is actually calculated. I'm going to double-click so that you can see 818,000 added to 500,000 is divided by dollar C. Okay? And then of course, simply to come at the revenue amount, we're simply taking the number of units and multiplying times the unit selling price. Unit selling price is in B62. The next scenario says, uh, oh hey, we want to make sure we have a certain percentage ROI. Well, remember our percentage ROI was 25 million on this 1.6 million in the initial investment. So we have to calculate that ROI first, which is done by taking um, the uh, $400,000, which is 25% times um, the $1.6 million, and I have that calculation in See where we have this right here. Make sure I have this here. Here we go. Right here, we have got the percent ROI multiplied times the 1.6 million. Okay, to tell us here's the profit goal here. We knew it was 500,000 here. 
But now we need to take that profit goal and add it to 818000 and divide by dollar C and round that up. Then we need to take that number of units that we just calculated and multiply it times the unit selling price. All right, very good. You can pause this video at any time. Uh, one of the things I want to make sure is very clear is how do you do this when you're looking at a per profit on a particular uh, unit? Okay, so the scenario, uh, the last scenario is we want to have a percent profit on sales. Well, if you think about where does profit go when we're thinking about units, let's just take a look at this. I'm going to calculate this for you next to it. Percent profit on sales means we're going to take that percentage goal of 15%, and we're going to multiply it times that unit selling price. So essentially we're saying every unit needs to have $75 profit on the bottom line. Well, if you think about our P&L statement, revenues less cost of goods sold equals margin. Margin is always talking about our dollar C. Well, this profit is actually after our operating expenses that we want to make sure we have. So to make sure it gets pushed down to that portion of a P&L statement, we actually have to subtract it from our dollar C. So let's just take a look at that. I've taken B80, which is our dollar C, and I have subtracted B52, 15% times 502.86, which essentially is this 7541. So I just set this up over the side so you can see what portion of the equation is part of this answer, okay? So this is the amount being subtracted from dollar C. I'm going to erase this now because that's not really part of what we need to show for our grade. We need to show one equation. So now we have a new uh, profit level on sales, which makes our new dollar C, which means I need to do a new break-even point which means I take this fixed cost divided by this new dollar C, okay, and then I'll get 4,178 units. I take that and multiply it times our um, unit selling price, 107 times, should be B62, B62, let's change that to B62. 107 times B62, which is where our unit selling price is, is 2 million, uh, 2.1, 2.1 million, and some additional numbers. Question 10 is real easy uh, because we were given the amount of units produced by all manufacturers in 2019, and then we were given a percentage in the beginning, I'm just going to scroll back up, of the growth expected for the industry. That's way back up here at the top of this spreadsheet, in the very beginning. Go back up here. I may just have to use my arrows to get back up here. Okay, so we had 14,000 units in all manufacturers in, in 19, 2019, remember there were five total companies, and the total estimated increase in the entire industry was 10%. Real simple. We were going to take B7 and multiply times 1 plus this percentage, and that's what this equation is right here. B7 times 1 plus 10% gets us 15,400 units. Now, what's really cool now, really cool now, is we get to calculate under each scenario what will Tupelo's market share be by simply taking the first scenario and dividing it by the number of units, the second scenario, number of units. These are all the different profit goals that we're looking at and comparing. Now we can make a business decision on, hmm, well, if I want to have 31% market share, then I need to have my required level of sales based on that half a million dollar profit goal. 
But if I want to actually produce the least amount of units, for whatever reason, then I want to go with my original plan. That's how this uh, case ends up, answering all 10 questions. Come back to part three, where I show you how to set up the print and actually make the graph, the break-even graph. Thank you.